Hello everybody, today we are here with Michael who is a big dropshipper in AutoDS and working with a big numbers rule and we will do this interview to really inspire you and give you some motivation and show you how Michael works. How are you today, Michael? Excellent, buddy. Thanks for having me on. Great. So, I prepared some questions really to give our audience some motivation and uh, show them how you work. So, from your experience, you can share any, anything that you want. And first, if you can please introduce yourself, how did you get into dropshipping? Where are you from? How did you start? Sure, sure. Um, I started dropshipping in 2016. I'm American. I live actually in Europe right now. Uh, I have a day job unrelated to dropshipping, but um, uh, I've been a lifelong entrepreneur my whole life, uh, besides the fact that I have a day job working for somebody else. <laughs> But um, I, you know, I've had a lawn mowing business. I went to college, uh, sold that, did a bunch of things. And ultimately in 2014, I took a trip to Southeast Asia for a couple months, took some time off work. Um, I wanted to travel basically. And I was looking for a way to pay for my uh, trip. I met all these people that they were traveling. And so I came home and, uh, uh, my girlfriend at the time broke up with me, so I figured it was a perfect time to figure out a way to make money online. The plan was to quit my make money, quit my job. Uh, I had a um, uh, a travel blog for about a year. That was a giant failure. Uh, I got into uh, Shopify high ticket drop shipping, uh, not the kind where you drop ship from, say AliExpress, but actually uh, you make connections with actual uh, manufacturers. Uh, that was great. The problem was it was seasonal. And so then I got into a couple other things, affiliate marketing. And ultimately in 2016, um, I got into drop shipping. I started out without software. And there, I don't think there really was a whole lot of software back in 2016, at least not that I knew of. And that was a giant nightmare because I sold a whole bunch of stuff that was out of stock. And then, you know, the prices were wrong. And I ended up finding... Uh, uh, profit scraper, which was a competitor of years, which is no longer in business. I think I talked to you about that. Um, and I started out, I think the first holiday I made $1,500 a month and it was amazing. I mean, that was, you know, it, just the idea of going from making zero to $1,500 a month, talking about actual profit. It's, it's the greatest feeling in the world. And then from there, I've had, it's been, you know, it's been ups and downs, but I had a great last six months. I've made the most money I've ever made um, really anywhere, but online. Um, and it's, it's just, it's the, it's the best. I wouldn't say it's the easiest, but it's, it's the best business model to make money online that doesn't take a lot of experience. And uh, eBay is the most forgiving platform basically. So that's kind of my experience. I've, I've run three stores. I'm down to one um, currently, but uh, it's my main store and it's, it's doing great. And thanks a lot for your software. It's, it's been the best software. I've, I've basically used them all. And I'm not just saying that to kiss your ass. I mean, it really is. It's, it's very good. Um, uh, a lot of the other softwares occasionally have, or oftentimes will have bugs and this and that. And any issues I've had with AutoDS has been fixed in a matter of hours without even saying anything. So it's actually, it's actually really good. Thank you very much for the feedback. Sure. And uh, it's a really interesting story, but uh, how did you study the dropshipping? Did you take any courses or just started? Sure, sure. So um, I, took, um, I took a course, it was $20. Uh, I'm cheap, so I waited till I got a half off for it to be ten dollars. <laughs> uh, it was um, um, Vu, something Vu. I forget. David Vu. David Vu, yeah, David Vu's course back in July of 2006. I actually looked it up recently because I was looking to see when I purchased it, and I took that, and it was very basic at the time, but uh, the fundamentals were perfect. It was by far the best $20 I've ever taken or I've ever spent. Uh, and then shortly after I, he, cause he doesn't talk about software. And so I then went and after I had problems, I went and sought out software. Um, and so that was kind of my foray. 
and it's just been profitable ever since. So, um, you know, I've, I've never moved on to anything else because I, I just think it's, I mean, to be honest right now, and I've spent a lot of time building my business, but I literally spend, I don't know, do you know of the book, The 4-Hour Work Week? Yeah. Yeah, I literally spend less than four hours. Now, now granted, like that's after years of building up my business and I have a team and so it's not, you know, there'll be times where I have catastrophes and I spend a lot more than that. But right now, knock on wood, it's four hours. So it's great. I love it. A week. A week. It's insane. Yeah, uh, I know. I know. I cannot it's, spend four hours in AutoBS a week. <laughs> what's that? I said that I cannot spend only four hours a week on AutoBS. <laughs> well, I've, that's a, I've got a couple employees that have been working for me for years, and they, they know everything in and out. Um, again, How many VAs you know, do you have in your business? I'm sorry? How many VAs are running your uh, stores? I have two. I, have, I just have the one store right now. I have two uh, full-time, one, one on, one off. So they work one week for seven days and they take a week off. Um, now, just to give you guys kind of an idea, my store has 60,000 listings. Uh, right now I'm doing right around 150,000 in sales a month. A few months ago, it was more than double that during the pandemic, uh, but it's kind of leveled out about 150,000. And I, my, uh, I have those two VAs and actually I have a third that works part time. Uh, right now eBay has these issues with item specifics. I'm sure you're aware of. And because I have such a big store, I have to go in and I have over 11,000 items that need corrected. So I've got one gentleman that works for me on and off does projects for me. So that's what he's doing for the next two months. I'm sure he hates me right now because it's terrible, <laughs> but so it's good for work, you know? Yeah, sure. But so you have right now 60,000 listings in your store, in one store? One store, yeah. And it's Anchor subscription? Uh, it, it is Anchor. Uh, I don't have the enterprise store primarily because um, they make you sign up for the year. And uh, there's one guy I know that signed up for a year and then they kicked him off eBay and they still expected him to pay for the store for the entire year. Which is crazy. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, so it's in a, and to be honest, it's, it's like 64,000 listings. It's the break even for the enterprise store anyway. So I'm just a little under that. So, yeah. So anyway, it's better for you for now to be on the anchor store and do you pay for the anchor store in the annual subscription, right? No, I pay um, month. No, actually, no, I do. I'm sorry. I do pay the two ninety nine a month. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because this commitment is much smaller than the three right, thousand. Right. Yeah. I can take a few thousand dollar hit. It's just like that twenty or thirty thousand dollar hit they want to get you for. That it's it's just it's not worth the risk. Yeah, I see. So you said that during the pandemic you had hundred fifty thousand dollars in sales per month and no no right what? i'm sorry go on yeah no i i have right now i have 150,000 in sales during the pandemic it was up to three hundred and sixty thousand dollars per month oh wow it's crazy yeah, yeah I, I cleaned up i'm telling you i <laughs> i'm still shocked i made uh i mean i don't care i made th- Net profit, this is after everything, VAs, returns, lost cases, just over 30,000 in one month. Now, granted, that was during like a world pandemic, so I don't suspect that to happen maybe ever again. Uh, But even now, so basically sales were good, uh, and then the pandemic came, and they're up here, and they're back down to still really good. And because I think people's buying um, uh, the way people buy is going to stick online because you had people who always are going to buy online. Then you had older people who didn't really buy online as much, but now they were forced to. And so now I think we have, yeah, I think we, it's sticky. I think those buyers are going to stick. And to be honest, I don't think it's a better time to ever be selling on eBay. And grant, there have been good and bad times. eBay is very 
fickle. They can uh, be a giant pain in the you know what sometimes. I'm sure you know this. But right now is by far the best time I've ever had selling on eBay. Um, and it's just not, uh, they, the sales are just there. I, I don't know what else to say. They're there. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to take my money and, you know, it's great. Yeah, you can I see that they're everywhere. So good. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you can see that everywhere in the stocks and in uh, everywhere. We also saw like double in sales during the pandemic in AutoDS in general, oh. uh, like for the users. But right, so, so I guess right now you have like half of this. It means that around 15,000 net profit and like, yeah, right? It's, it's, uh, actually I'll tell you right now. It's right around, I want to give, I know everyone likes numbers, so I want to be accurate. It's right around about 14,000. Yeah, wow. right, yeah. It's insane. So 14,000 uh, in profits from four hours work a week and 60,000 week. Right. Nice. And I, I don't want to, I, I say that at the risk of sounding like those idiots that have those commercials about, you know, give us your money, you'll work one hour a week and make $10 million. Like, it's not like that. I mean, you have to, you know, to get to where I was, you're going to spend a year, maybe longer building your store. But uh, usually within, this is what I always recommend, spend three months building the store so that you learn everything because you can't hire VAs and then just tell them to do something when you don't, because they're going to come back to you with problems and you're not going to be able to know how to fix it. So do it for three months. That's right about the time where you'll be sick of finding stuff to list. <laughs> hire some uh, Filipino VAs or VAs from wherever um, and then let them build your store and you just work on the store rather than in the store and yeah i mean i if you work within a year there's no reason that you can't expect a, a sizable income now i'm not going to again say thirty thousand or fourteen thousand i think i'm probably somewhat of an anomaly but that's just because i stuck with it it wasn't because i was uh smarter or knew something everyone else didn't i just i don't give up i'm stubborn like that and that's that's it's a good thing and a bad thing but in business it, it's definitely a good thing so that's a great note for the audience that the results are not coming immediately and you really yeah. should stick with the work and stay consistent and that's the only way you really need to go. Um, do you still work in your daily job right now? I do and that's actually, here's some irony. Uh, I do and I just got a notice two days, three days ago from my boss that um, so basically, uh, I was transferred to Europe to work and my boss said, hey, because of the pandemic and everything that's going on, uh, we might send you back to the U.S. next year. And I don't really want to move back to the U.S. because a number of reasons, one of which I get a favorable tax treatment living outside the U.S. So out of the money I make, I pay little to no taxes. If I live in the U.S., I'd be paying a lot of taxes. So uh, he said, hey, next June, you might have to go back to the US. And so depending on how the business is going, if it's still staying consistent, I might just quit my job. I'll probably quit my job, which is something I was planning on doing three years ago, but uh, I'm finally at a point where I think I feel comfortable with it. So it's, I mean, this is gonna be my main income. I do have other side investments, but this would be the main income I'd be living off of. Don't you think that if you leave your job, you can spend more time on the business and scale it even more? Uh, well, that's, that's, one, that's one of my plans. Actually, um, what I would like to do is I have my store. I want to keep it the size it is. And I have a, a few reasons for that. But what I'd really like to do is I'd like to get five or ten other stores, maybe partner with other people. I would run them. I would fund the business. I would do everything. Um, I know it's, there's, there's a big thing, big push right now for Amazon automation where they say, Hey, give us your money. We will create your products. And you know, it's, they get all the money. You take all the risk. My, something I've been thinking about is finding other people that I can work with. 
Uh, I would run the accounts. I do everything. I mean, I would even fund the purchases. So there's really, there's no risk on anyone except for me. That's how much I'm confident with what I know. And if I quit my job, I'm probably partially going to move to the Philippines. I'm going to hire some more VAs and I would like to build up five or 10 uh, stores, start there. And from there just kind of grow because it's, uh, I'm just confident. I mean, the business model works. There is a chance of you losing your account. Um, but I think if you do it correctly, it's minimal. I just in complete, um, uh, transparency, I lost one of my accounts recently, but it was, uh, but it's a long story, but it's rare. I think if you run it properly, the chance of you losing your account is a lot less limited. So anyways, to answer your question, my plan is probably if I do that, I'm going to expand and diversify, find other people that want to work with me. The problem is with managed payments, I'm kind of worried about how I could deal with stealth accounts. And uh, so I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, I've thought about the idea of just basically working with other people. Because here's the thing, I know a lot, it, it's, this is a, it's an actual business. It takes work. And some people, you know, family uh, gets in the way. Some people, to be honest, are just lazy. Or, uh, you know, it's just not, or it's not the right business for them. I understand that, you know, you got to deal with people. And so I've always thought, well, maybe I have the opportunity since I'm, I'm motivated and I have the knowledge, maybe I could partner with other people. And um, it's an opportunity, I don't know, it's just something I've been floating around with basically. And so to answer your question about expanding, that's kind of, I, I probably would just for the safety of having multiple accounts rather than just the one in store. Cool. It's insane. Yeah, sure. I would do the same basically if your store is running and making so much profit. So there's no reason to touch it instead of right. spreading for more stores. By the way, uh, you interviewed me to your podcast that, uh, by the way, we can add below this video. And uh, you asked me to link you with other people with stores. Did you find someone? Did you start any partnership? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, where do I start with this one? Um, to be honest, I don't use social media very much. I think it's beneficial. I think it has its benefits, but to me, it's just a time suck. It's good if it's good to advertise your business and other things. Anyways, um, so I did reach out through, basically I went through um, your uh, Facebook page and other Facebook pages and tried to connect with other people uh, to basically push my idea. And there's, I don't know if it's just me, but it seemed like there's a lot of kind of sketchy people that I was trying to get connected with. And then they, you know, I would try to set up meetings because I'm, to me, this, this business is professional. I'm hundred percent legit. I report all my earnings to the government. I, everything's above board. And there's a lot of people when I wanted to get on face-to-face -face conferences just to make a personal connection with them, they didn't seem interested. And I said, hey, what can you prove your account, what your limits are? And there's a lot of, no, no, just trust me. And like, that's not going to work for me. I've, I've been around the block. and But I know there's a lot of people out there that I just have to figure out a way to make a connection with them. So I haven't had, I've spoken with five people now and none of which it's, it's worked out. Um, I don't know if they're not motivated. Maybe, maybe I'm seen the I'm the one that's seen as being sketchy. I don't know. Maybe it's me. I don't know. But um, I've I, I I don't know. If you have some ideas, please tell me. Make some okay. connections. Cool. So first, I will link you, uh, connect you with uh, some uh, friends who have okay. a lot of stalls, and uh, I hope it will help you. And also. We will think about it later, but maybe we can put a form below this video where people can leave their details to reach you or something like that with, you know, yeah. screenshots of the store or something like that. We will try to think about it later together. Sure. Um, but cool, it's a good way to expand and you're really confident with what you know and do. So. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's... Uh, like I have, I have no problem using my own money, put up my own, you know, doing everything because I know, um, you know, yes, there is the chance of, you know, eBay shutting your store, or Amazon shut. I mean, there's a risk everywhere, anywhere in business. 
but I think you can minimize it. And um, like I said, my, my biggest value add is I don't give up. Um, so, you know, eBay in the last three years has changed four or five years, whatever it is, has changed a lot. They have demoted drop shippers, uh, listings. They have given us promoted listings. They have taken away promoted listings. And so sales, you know, do go up and down like this. But the good thing of that is, um, when that happens, people can get discouraged and they quit, which I'm sure is one of the problems you see with, you know, being the owner of a software, um, is and it's just normal it's not it's not that there's anything wrong with you if you do that it's just a normal way of i think i maybe i'm a freak you know <laughs> it's like to me I, i'm like this is great because i know some people will quit and that just if i stick around long enough i know my store will do better and i think that's why it's done so well and the people i know that drop ship their stores it's the same thing um so you know for those of you guys starting out listening i promise you you'll have a time where ebay kicks you in the teeth and you just want to quit, take the day off, go out drinking, go on a date, do whatever you do, then, you know, come back and just know that there's very quickly, eBay is a, uh, I'm sorry to ramble, I'll be really quick here. eBay is a $90 billion, they did 90 billion in sales last year. Of that, 80% of that is new items. So call it, say 60 billion is new item sales. Of that, most of those are drop shippers. So say 55, 50, 55 billion dollars a year are drop shippers. I'm through, I go through, and, and these numbers come from uh, somebody high up in eBay. So I know this all stuff, all this is factual. If a business, the number two website in America does 55 billion, maybe 60 billion of drop shipping sales a year, if you think it's going away, you're crazy. I mean, you're crazy. They, we are their business. So, you know, they might punch you in the teeth once or twice, but you just get back up. They can't kick us all off forever. It's just, it's just not realistic. So, um, you know, people that say is eBay drop shipping dead, $60 billion is all I have to say, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I agree. eBay drop shipping is like any business. It's a roller coaster and basically you just need to stick with it and you know, the up will come. That's how it works. Yeah, uh, yeah. But cool. I, I'm sure that after people will listen to this, it, it will motivate them a lot, which is amazing. Um, with which suppliers do you work? Uh, I only use Amazon. I used to use Home Depot. I used Home Depot for a while. And then when eBay did the update back in April of... 2018 that kind of screwed me, but uh, I used to have a connection with discounted gift cards actually from the company that makes the dis the gift cards. Actually, I guess I still do. Um, there's a company that actually produces gift cards for Home Depot. So you're not buying it like through some sketchy website. You're actually, it's a core, it's a fortune 500 company. So um, uh, I had negotiated discounts through them. Um, in addition, they, they do it for some others, but right now I solely use Amazon because there's some issues with Home Depot at one point. Amazon just works. I've got, if you're an American, you, you can get, um, you get big discounts, uh, with certain credit cards and then you can use some tricks. And so, um, it just, Amazon's the easiest. It's the most, um, competitive but there's so much traffic, I, I don't really worry about it. I mean, it's just, I, I know a lot of people say don't use Amazon because there's a lot of competition. And to me, if, if you're gonna stick around for a while, I think it's just the easiest. But there, a lot of people use other you know, companies and they do well too, so. Yeah, basically you have around 600 million products on Amazon. So I don't know if people say that there is a competition or not a competition, but you have 600 million different SKUs to use in your business, which is right. crazy. You, you need just 60,000 to make 15,000 15, in profits. So. It's one tenth of 1% of their items or something or yeah, some, yeah, some ridiculous number, you know, and I'm, I probably don't even have the best items, you know, I'm sure there are plenty of other items out there that are just as good, if not better. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if, if, uh, if you're fine with sharing, but if yes, 
uh, how do you find your products any strategy that you can share or yeah um, look my opinion is real simple like I said let's call it 55 billion dollars of drop shipping sales on um, eBay I'm not worried I mean I'm I have an abundance mentality so uh, yeah I'll tell you exactly what I do so uh, I if I can remember off the top of my head I actually haven't done it for forever I have my uh, employees do it but I'll go in and find an item uh, well let me tell the easy way and I'll tell the hard way basically I just go and find an item on Amazon or I'm sorry I, um, yeah I go to Amazon find an item with a lot of sales that has a very short title uh, and this will make sense here in a minute so you just go to Amazon item that has a short title and I search it eBay uh, just in the search bar and then um, those products will pop up. And um, the reason I do this is because I'm looking for someone that uses Amazon and um, as their source. And then I'll go in there and I will then search that product. Shoot, I just totally said it wrong. Uh, well, let, you go, you way, go I'm to eBay. I'm getting, I'm getting all mixed up. Basically, I go to eBay, um, I find sellers that I know are using eBay or it's using Amazon as a source. Uh, and then I will um, just simply find all the products that they've sold. And, you know, if you're starting out, I would say find products that have sold, uh, say five times. I just find any product that's ever sold. And I take that, I match it with Amazon product. I use that title uh, and then I use that ASIN and then I upload it into AutoDS. And so most of my products have optimized title. Um, you can simply use the Amazon's title, but you're gonna get, I did the math, I think it's you're gonna get a third as many, you'll get three times more sales if you use an optimized title. Um, so you have, have optimized title for 60,000 listings? Now, well, 20,000 of them. Wow. 20,000 I do, and then the other 40,000 I used your uh, auto finder for the other 40. Uh, when I switched over to your store, um, I had 20,000 listings, and I used your auto finder for the next 40,000. So wow. um, it's, it, I know it's a lot more work, and I know people are gonna try to find the easy way, but if you want this to be a long-term business, Find sellers on basically the easiest way is find sellers on eBay that use your source for me, Amazon, and then just find their sold listings and just take their sold listings, match that product with your Amazon listing and uh, upload the title with the, the optimized title with the uh, ASIN, which you can do in AutoDS and just do that. And while it takes a lot longer, and sometimes you're gonna have trouble. Uh, actually, I left one thing out. Um, find someone that, find a seller whose profits are larger than yours. So, I mean, I'm not gonna say what my margins are, but, um, or my markup, but let's just say your markup's 40%. That's a little high, but uh, find a seller who uh, has products, you know, just find a seller that's, that's the way I just said, and then take five or six of their items, see what their margin is, and if it's higher than your margin, those are the ones I take and I basically scrape uh, their titles and their listings. And after a while, once you get to the point where I have like 20,000, it takes a long time, but that's where your VAs come in and you can just pay people. You pay them well and they do a good job and it just builds over time. Like my store took me, I think a year, year and a quarter maybe to get 20,000 listings optimized. So all of your titles, we are built by your team or you copied it from other eBay sellers? 100% copied. 100% copied. I haven't optimized one title myself. Because here's the thing, most of the way, the way um, eBay search works is it's not as intricate as Amazon. From what I can tell, it's largely based off keywords in the title. And uh, if you find an eBay seller that has sold listings, you know that titles worked at least once. Uh, people have used, because most buyers use the same words to find a product, and that's the one that popped up with a reasonable enough, not too high of a price, 
So you can then go in, take that title, you know it sells, you know that that price is, is reasonable and yours is probably gonna be a little lower. So you undercut them. Now I wouldn't undercut everyone really low. Um, just find a good price that works for you. When I start out, I would keep my margins fairly low just to get velocity of your account. And then uh, you can raise your rates a little bit. Um, and uh, that's all, I mean, it, it works. That's what I did in 2016 and it works just as well in, in 2020. Amazing. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, nice. What, uh, did, what are the issues that you faced in the beginning while you were scaling your business? Like now it's really huge, but in the beginning, I guess that you had some hard times to scale it. What, what was the, you know, the things that you really remember that was the, the hardest for you? The hardest? The, oh. Yeah. Um, well, again, it, it, when you start out for the first month, you'll make, you know, a dollar or two. And you'll be very excited because you made money online. And then you build the business. And after a few months, it, it becomes tedious. And that's where a lot of people quit. And the key here is... Um, when you get to the point where you're like, man, I don't want to scrape any more sellers and, you know, find, match up listings or, you know, you're sick of dealing with customer service. That is the time where you then hire a virtual assistant to then take over the monotonous tasks. And that's how you grow because it will get after a while, it will get tedious. It will get, that's why I give my employees a week on week off. Cause I don't, you know, it's, it's a tedious business, but everyone would want a week on week off. That's a great schedule and I can afford it. And, um, but in addition to that, when I was scaling, the problem is, is, you know, in the past four or five years, eBay, uh, they'll change the algorithm and your sales will go way down. And so you'll be making, I remember one point a few years ago, I was making $10,000 a month from one store and then it went down to a thousand profit oh. um, or 2000, something like that. And it was discouraging and ultimately I had to lay some people off. But again, like what I, I realized when I went through, I want to rebuild my store up some, I want to add more listings. I took all the eBay sellers that I had scraped before to find their listings. And I was like, oh, I want to see if they have new listings. Two thirds of them had quit. In a year, year and a half, two thirds of them had quit. And so what that told me was if I stick with this, you know, that my competition is leaving because eBay will change the algorithm. eBay still wants to have sales. So someone has to get those sales and they can't, you know, demote the listings or punish all eBay sellers because most of the listings for a certain product are just eBay sellers, uh, drop shippers, I'm sorry. And so the problem I had there, uh, you know, is just, you know, to answer your question, it's just pretty much sticking with it. And when you get upset, when you get, you know, you're just, you're fed up, it's time to hire on help. And you can do that for, if you, you know, if you're not making much money, you can get a good VA for $500 a month. I mean, you get for less, depends what you can afford. I would, personally, what I would do is I'd build up my business till I could afford a VA. So once you're making five, $600 a month, net profit after everything, I would instantly rather taking that money, put in your pocket, I would hire a VA and just put off, uh, delay gratification for a while and build your store because I promise you in six months when you're making big money you'll be happy the problem is most people take the money instantly they spend it and so they don't have the money to hire a VA and they just don't grow like they should you, you know I saw so many cases I, I so agree with it because I saw so many cases of dropshippers in not with yes who were really successful they started to make profits and then they just decided to take all this money back home to their pocket and then their businesses crashed because they didn't spend it back to grow and improve the business. Right. And, uh, you know, and that's kind of what we we're talking about before with how I want to grow and, and run other stores. I want to run everything. I don't want the people that, whether I get a store, whether I partner with someone with their store, I want to run everything because I know um, I don't want too many hands in the pockets. I just, if I do it, I know it'll be, well, I can't guarantee it'll be successful, but I don't want to partner with someone who then wants to take the money and spend it 
you know, I would rather just run everything, you know, pay them their share. And if they want to spend that part, great, but we will always have money to hire virtual assistants. And I mean, I'm a business person through and through, just like you. Uh, and the truth is a lot of people aren't, there's nothing wrong with that. And it's, uh, but, um, yeah, I think if I give advice, take that first thousand dollars you make and hire someone and you're giving someone a job too. So it's, it's, it's great. They'll be thankful. And, you know, if you can delay that gratification for three, six months, you know, you'll trust me, you'll thank yourself. You really will. I agree. Really. Uh, that's how my developer today has also grow. Like in the first year, I didn't took anything back home. Everything was spent to improve the business and go forward. I think that's the only way to go in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Um, I will not take a lot from your time also. I will uh, ask some final questions. Um, how, like you moved to Autodesk around half a year ago, uh, from what you said, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what do you use in AutoDS to help you automate your business? Like, what, what does it do for you? And maybe we will have some tips for other people how to save more time using the tool. Sure. Um, well, like I said, when you start off, uh, AutoDS is it's an AutoDS Finder, I think, or mm -hmm. is that what's called? The Products Finder. Product Finder. Yeah. Yeah. Um, AutoDS Finder. Yeah. So I would, I use that to add uh, 40,000 listings. I would not use that to start. Uh, I would use my method. It's slower, but you get a lot better listings. Um, there, the way I do it, there's no way, there's no way to automate the way I do it. You just have to do it manually. Um, uh, but I would start off with that. Um, but I would start AutoDS from, from day one, just using it to, um, for your stock quantities for, to, to monitor your stock, to monitor your price. Um, and then once that, you know, once you build up your listings, then you can kind of switch over if you want and get more automated as far as defining products that, uh, Lior's software does. Um, as far as, um, it's, I also use the auto order. I do. I, I won't use any service unless they have an auto order. And I, for me, I'd say it probably gets 95% of my orders right. Um, less than 5% fail. And oftentimes that's not really auto DS. It's because there's an address issue or there's some issue that's not related to auto DS. Uh, so I also use it for auto orders. Um, uh, there is, I know there's things you can do in auto DS like uh, messaging people and all of that. And it kind of, it segregates your, maybe your employees from having to get into your eBay account. I trust my employees. They just, they've always run it through eBay. So I always have, I know the options there. Um, I don't have much experience with that, but I definitely, um, it's very important to have software that properly monitors your stock and your prices uh, frequently. And that is one thing. There's other softwares out there. Um, as well. Um, but I will say auto DS is the best that I've used. I haven't used them all. I've used probably five of them. Um, and that's, it definitely, you know, the stock money monitoring, the price monitoring, the auto ordering, uh, special auto ordering. And that works well because, uh, prices change, stock levels change and you need to get in there and you need to order quickly. Uh, and that's, that's basically what I use auto order for to, uh, to automate the business. Cool. Thank you so much for the feedback, by the way. Um, okay, so what will be your best tip for beginners, last tip that you can give them, uh, people who just starting? Um, like you gave during the interview a lot of them, but the one that you would focus on and really start from there to scale and, uh, you know, improving the business uh little little steps so uh like i said this business at times can be monotonous at first you're going to have the adrenaline 
So it's going to be easier. But if I would say, you know, set an hour aside every day, say I'm going to do five listings or find 10 listings or 20 listings or whatever the number is and set that time and make small little goals. Uh, today you'll set up your eBay account. Tomorrow you'll set up your AutoDS account or whatever software you use. Uh, and the next day I would um, say I'm going to find 10 listings and then 10 listings the next day. And so if, if you're like, hey, I want a store that has 60,000 listings and it's making 15 grand a month or 14 grand a month, it's unrealistic because you end up quitting because that's going to take a long time. So if just, you know, take, take five days a week, take maybe two days off. If you got a family, if you're a crazy crackhead like me, you'll just work every day. But um, take an hour or two and set aside and tell your spouse or whoever it is that's around you. Say, hey, I really have this business. I want to build it. Please support me. Just give me an hour a day. And um, that way you have that time set aside. You're not overwhelming yourself. When it does, when it gets boring, you're not, you know, you're not going to quit. And then commit yourself, I say to a year. But at least at least three months, three to six months, at a very minimum three months, six months. To me, everything I do is for at least a year. But give yourself at least three months, one or two hours a day, five days a week. And if you do that, I think you'll be hard pressed to um, not find some level of success. Again, I'm not going to promise you uh, you'll make what I'm making, or you know, I'm sure there's people who make a lot more than I do. But you will, I think you'll find a level of success enough to where you're like, this is great. Now I'm making a thousand dollars. I hate doing listings. I hate customer service. I can hire someone else. You just do it step by step. Um, it's, it's manageable. That's not just auto um, eBay drop shipping, but any business you do. Uh, it's a lot better if you set it up that way. I think you'll find success a lot more often than if you just have one big goal and you expect to reach it by the end of the month. It just isn't realistic. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much, Michael, for right on. all your knowledge and all this inspiration that you gave to people. And we will share below this video the link to your podcast for people to hear. And uh, okay. if you want to share your contact if someone wants the partnership or any Google form, we'll talk about it later. And again, thank you very much. And everyone who wants to be interviewed also to this channel, uh, you will have a form below this video where you can share your details. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube, YouTube channel, like this video, and comment down with any questions that you have about the video. And again, thank you, Micah. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Bye.